to overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Today we have King Chaka ENT with us. Let's not waste any time and get right into this. Chaka, could you please introduce yourself and give the people just a little bit of background on who you are and what you do, please? Yes, uh, my name is Chaka Perkins. I'm a University of Houston student. Uh, uh, my major is anthropology. I'm actually about to graduate. And I plan on continuing and get a master degree. And also I wanna go to law school. And so, but my heart is with um, activism, you know, cause I wanna find a way to do activism one way or another. So if it's not through academics, then it'll be through uh, just going in the community and screaming in people's face, you know? So yeah, my um, King Chaka ENT is the name of the page. And uh, my slogan is, you know, uh, we want you to be an activist, you know, we create activists. So I focus on history, I focus on education, I focus on, you know, explaining politics. And, you know, I, you know, I, I don't pick a left or right or whatever. I want people to stop the, uh, the, the left right paradigm, uh, the Democrat Republican paradigm, because that's how they're separating people and allowing people to not be able to see what's actually happening. So I dissect politics, I go over history, and you know, race is a big thing here in the United States that doesn't get talked, you know, it doesn't have enough uh, context. Like we don't talk about it in the right way. So that's another thing that I focus on on my channel because we can't leave that out of the, uh, of the spectrum of the, of the conversation because it's very, very relevant. Oh, you're so, so right. And, you know, a lot of people like to be ostriches and put their head in the sand when it comes to those hard things, because uh, when you have an opinion, other people are going to judge you. And that's kind of the mindset of America. And that's not who we are, really. We are independent people. We, we lead. We don't follow. We are all activists and we should have an opinion and we should be proud of our opinion so what got you started in activism uh man i ain't gonna lie maybe i was an activist for the longest i've always pushed against the uh the um you know the dominant structures i always like i give my instructors a hard time at the university whenever it's something the paper i'm writing right now um the, the the professor had us read this book by a feminist which is okay but it was like some of the topics that she like even the citations she used went back to some stuff that i felt wasn't proper like it wasn't so i have to push back against that i can't allow us any of us to fall you know into these you know little groups and sections that kind of like alienate one over another well you know right now in the united states i feel like they 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 pit us against each other in every single different yeah. way like the, the thing with the masks and the mandates right now everybody has to choose a side we're all at each other's necks i don't know i just care i have a heart and i and it, it hurts me to see the united states in the position that we're in just like at each other's throats. And I mean, I don't know. I really don't, the, the answer is I don't know when it started. That's, that's the simple answer. Yeah, well, sometimes that is the answer because that's true to myself. I, I think I was just born that way and I've always questioned authority. You know, early on in my schooling at the fourth grade level, that's when it hit and the teacher I had 
kind of made me push back and I ran from school. I ran from authority and still to this day, yeah, it's good to keep authority in check because here in America, we, the people are the authority. And sometimes those roles of authority that are given as a respect in return, we expect higher morals, higher standards, they get treaded on really easily. And the power that we give is not to be powerful with. Right. And I think that um, our power, we, we're forgotten that we have power. And I think that it's because of the media, it keeps telling us that we don't have power. Yes. You know, it, it, it's, they're telling us to just, you know, your vote is your voice and then that's it. And, and you know, and, and basically go sit down and, and, and shut up. Well, really, Chaka, that's kind of why you're stepping up. That's why I'm stepping up. We see these imbalances, these immoral characters within our so-called news media, and they get, there's some good ones, but most of them are stepping away from that uh, so-called media spotlight, and they're starting to really personalize and become independent in their journalism and really want to be able to voice their opinion instead of that platform opinion. And that's very important for what we are doing as the little guy, but yet us as the little guy, we do have a place, we have a purpose. And what you're doing is very, very needed because if we can get people to start relating, communicating, and understanding, we're not divided. We're people and we have the power. I don't care what religion, color, uh, I don't care about any of that. I care that you really take part and you recognize if there's a wrong like you just stated earlier, you had better be pointing it out. And that's why you're so important in what we're doing by podcasting, broadcasting, and getting other people to actually come along and get involved. That's what it's about. And, 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 and I like what you said, because we're all just humans. We're all just humans, right? They like to say conservative or liberal. I don't think anybody is completely conservative or completely liberal. You can be socially conservative and economically liberal, and you can be economically conservative and uh, socially liberal. If that makes sense, what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a good point. I like what it, you just said. It, we're, we're all a mix of those. We're not, you know, it's way more complex than the boxes that they like to put us in. You know, I, um, I can agree with uh, uh, Tucker Carlson and I can agree with Rachel Maddow. What's wrong with that? Yeah, I don't even have a TV in my house anymore because of the division. See, I, I get enough information and I get to choose how I consume that better by not having that commercialized box in my house. And that's why I love podcasting and yeah. people on YouTube, things like that. We need yeah. to really take back our power in a uh educated way we don't have to bring guns and violence into it they have to listen to us if we are in a collective stance yes i completely agree and i don't watch tv anymore um i scroll you i mean i'm on youtube and i scroll instagram and that's pretty much all i do now and read books um yeah uh, be because the tv like there's nothing it's all trash it's like it's all like it's all it's all forcing us to embrace our lower selves yes. and, 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 and causing division and, 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 and strife in, in, in our, because of the economic uh, model, right? The profit model, right? These companies, whatever it is, the TV show, whatever you're watching, they don't care about what's real or what's true or what's gonna help the community. All they care about is making a dollar. So if that's their motivation, then they're not gonna, you know, they're, they're never gonna be, you know, helpful really. Yeah, you know, that stems from that Howard Stern uh, shock jock 
type reporting that really started creeping in and stuff. Uh, but when when we allowed these people to really start polluting our atmosphere of information intake, and really, I don't even recognize when it started to creep in because I have questions so far back that, you know, the Nixon Watergate, the Kennedy thing, you know, there is so much in our nation that we are oblivious because these forces, these want to uh, control us people, they have an agenda. And if we don't recognize that agenda, we are subject to it. And I did not recognize this until I was hurt, injured, and I was forced to really look deep into what was happening around me. Otherwise, I was too busy in the mundane nine to five, get it done, come home. You know, I didn't care. I had too much to worry about. But that mindset, that's very wrong and very inconsiderate of everybody, even ourselves. So once we start to say, hey, I'm going to question that, if it doesn't sound right, I have the right to ask why. Why is that? Because science or something tells me this, and you're trying to tell me this. There's nothing wrong with that. But the authority, we've been trained to follow authority with, with no question. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's been trained since we were in elementary school to just the authority figure, do what they say, and that's it, you know, um, it, like, like you said, and then it, that leaves us at powerless um, because we, we believe in the authority, just like the media we was mentioning. So the media is, is, a, is a sense of an authority to a lot of people, CNN, MSNBC, or Fox or wherever, they feel like they have an authority over the subject matter. So then a, a large segment of our, you know, populace, you know, takes what they say as, you know, as gospel, you know, and don't question it because if they feel like it's coming from a, you know, an approved source, an authority, authoritative source. Yes, that's, that's very key right there. You know, and there was a study done back in the 60s by Stanley Milgram, and it was, what would you do if authority told you it was okay, basically? And the amount, and people need to look up the Milgram experiment what a white coat and a suit will do to the ordinary person is amazing. That authority, well, they said it's okay. So that relieves us in the responsibility, but it doesn't really, it doesn't. It doesn't. You are still pushing the button. And it, right. it, that, that Milgram experiment stems out of the Nazi uh, population in Germany that just went along with the ideology of Hitler and you know the brown shirt uh, shirts and th this is not good mentality you need to stand up you need to question and you need answers that make sense if it doesn't make sense you need more questions that they need to answer and this because is a good mindset to have I completely agree that like a lot of the, the SS soldiers didn't agree with what they were doing, but they felt trapped in it. You know, they had they had to they felt like they had to do what they had to do. But what a lot of people don't understand is if you got the order to pull the trigger, your finger is the one that pulled the trigger. That's right. That is very true. And that's what we need to really identify. It doesn't matter what authority tells you. You have the right to say no and no matter what the circumstances you get to choose if you're just going to go along with evil or not and that's the whole point of it 
we've lost the ability to stand up to the authority. And that's not how America is. We protect that here. And I really encourage more people to stand up and we don't need all the violence if we educate properly and don't let them you know hide the knowledge and suppress the the information this is key make sure what you're learning is proper and understand history usually repeats itself exactly you have to do your due diligence due diligence and that's why I focus on history. And, that, and I think that's the same reason why we're not taught history properly. We, you know, it's, it's skewed and, and, and you know, it's, it, it has a narrative, you know, and, and to lead you to think in a certain way. And certain things are excluded and some things are highlighted. And, and then we, we, we don't get to really understand. And uh, like I say, even in the, uh, the you know, the official uh, academics, um, that the, the, the educational history uh, is, is not adequate. So I think each one of us have to do our due diligence, go back and take a, cause the information is there, you know, but you just have to do a little digging, you know? And if you do understand what happened in history, then you can understand what's happening now. I stress that all the time. How can you understand what's happening now if you don't understand what happened yesterday? That is very true because uh, history is where it's at, but we all also have to remember that history is always subject to the morals of the party in control. And coming out of World War II, those morals sort of shifted into the American hands. And here we are drifting from those ideologies that we believed in before the war you know we were isolationist we were people should pick themselves up remember edgar hoover wanted us to actually pick ourselves up and work ourselves out of the depression and then you have roosevelt coming in with the new deal era that made it simple and easy and people kind of have went downhill from those socialistic principles that were instituted and instilled into the american ecology right there it's kind of uh really naive for people to be blind of that fact that when when we are not willing to do the hard stuff the hard stuff is going to fall on us. And the, the, the biggest problem I think with the uh, United States today is that we don't manufacture anything anymore. Mm -hmm. That when the time where you're talking about, we manufactured everything that we needed. So that's what I mean though. And also kind of like this, you touched on socialism a bit. So like even to this day, if you go to rural areas out in the country, these farms, they, they help each other. If, yes. if, if, if this season my harvest was great and my neighbor's harvest wasn't, then I'm going to share with him. And then the next season my harvest isn't so great and theirs was, they're going to share with me. We're going to make sure that we make it through this. My tractor breaks down, then the, you know, and I don't have what the resources I need, then my neighbor is going to come through for me. And they do this in rural areas. Yes. You know, and a lot of people will call that socialism. But we have this thing against socialism, like, we, you know, it's become a bad word, you know? And like I say, the manufacturing, we don't make anything. So that's why we got to rely on these other countries. This is our problem. We, we need to be manufacturing everything that we need here within our borders. That's right. We need to be independent. And we have every resource here on this continent to ensure that. And, and really this shifts into that falling into the ease of everything. You know, we've shifted our manufacturing offshores and the, the burden of workload has actually went around the world, but yet the wealth that is actually initiated out of that growth has not 
grown along with the path of its growth, the wealth has stayed sort of isolated. And this is kind of my beef with the capitalist system. We've allowed the, when we brought in these corporations, they were to help build America. But now those were chartered at the time and very few of those corporate charters were actually given out. We've went hog wild and we've allowed our greed to take over is what my opinion is on that. Yeah, I completely agree because we all want to be Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yep. yeah exactly. So, you know, but we all cannot be Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. It's an impossible thing, you know? So um, we, we all can't be Jeff Bezos. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, one thing I think people don't understand is the American public, we subsidize Jeff Bezos and them. Like, let's say right. the, uh, the pharmaceutical companies, you know, the research going into these new drugs, you know, a lot of that comes from the taxpayer's money. But then a private person owns that patent. You know, yes. so we 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 flip the bill for most of the investments, but then a private person gets to own the patent and then sell it right back to us at, at unfair prices. People That's... are dying because they can't pay for pharmaceuticals when the pharmaceuticals were produced by the money that came from the people. That is the very logic that is killing us, you know, and once we realize that and shift back to manufacturing, taking care of ourselves again, getting more agrarian in our mindset, learning how to grow our gardens, learning how to repair things instead of throwing them away and buying something new. These mindsets are sustainable. And these are how we grow and bring our economy back. So it, it was built up by a lot of that like you said, people got paychecks to build this. And then it's like our power grid. It was subsidized big time. And now we're paying big time when we're the ones that paid to help build this. Like you just said, where did that come from? And why are we allowing this behavior for a progressive state to happen? I don't, I don't have an answer to that one. Uh, insanity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say that um, the future will have to be local. The only way we're going to survive is if we have small farms, you know, local farms, local everything that we go to, um, you know, to get our products and services from for, for us to even continue to be a country. People think that the United States can't go away, but it can go away. It's happened. Historically, right. countries, countries come and go. They rise and they fall. People think that the uh, United States is invincible, you know, and we're not. And the only way for us to survive into the future is to have, go back to, because Monsanto, these big, huge farms, right. the, pine, the pine oil, acres and acres of pine or soybeans, we can't even eat that. Like, that's not sustainable. We, you know, we need small farms that have multiple different, you know, uh, things that they grow to support their local region. You know, that's it. We can't be growing uh, acres and acres of soybeans to sell some stuff to China or whatever the hell. If, you know, things go down, we can't sell those soybeans and we're hungry. We got acres and acres of soybeans that we can't eat and we will starve. It's same with corn. You know, we've got the same incentivized corn industry and the you stated Monsanto, this corporation wants to patent the seed, you know, so they control the rights to a seed that that's nonsense. That's so insanity. It's and insanity. It's already, <laughs> it's already happening. The, uh, the, 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 the products that they grow don't produce seeds. So each season, the farmers got to go buy the seeds from Monsanto again. That's right. Because they, they can't use the seeds from the products. 
you know, and then Monsanto, you know, has such a monopoly on this thing that if you do grow something else, they're going to sue you or whatever, because they're going to say you, you're cross, your plants are cross pollinating and messing up our stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and how the heck did that get passed through all of these big money lobbyists that we allow inside our house the people's house we the people got shoved out and big business got let in there's something wrong there the the, the people have no voice the the big money the lobbyists and then another thing i think people need to understand the lobbyists the uh the ceos and the politicians these are all the same people it's a revolving door you leave one That's job right. and go to the to the other then you know and, and this these are the elite crowd you know that 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 gets to make all the decisions you know and, and you know like i say if we really want to fix the politics then we got to take the big money out of it. there's no way there can be any kind of fairness if some if if, if if a big pharmaceutical company can put all this money behind a candidate and then put all this money on this lobbyist to basically write the laws that get that, that goes to congress and then they own half the politicians that's voting. That's so right. the, the, the laws are going to pass in their favor, regardless of what we do. That's right. You know, so people awakening to these behaviors, that's what we need. And, you know, I used to get irritated, mad and angry. And now I grab books. I read more and I reach out to people and I try to educate those that are still lost. And that movement is picking up big time. It, it is helping. We, the people, run the place here in America. And these laws that we go by, we've allowed professional people to manipulate us long enough. It's time to really educate ourselves about civics, how government works and making sure we tell the little people the children this get them involved don't say don't worry about it that's not for us it is for us and the and more people we can aspire and direct into getting involved with the politics and becoming that you know school board member that city administrator that clerk any political office any place that runs our government the library we have to take all of these places back from that we've been doing it this way for 40 years mentality and it's not going to change well change is coming to america and i agree with you on that because it's going to have to. If not, then we won't be America no more. That's right. But this, the system, is, is it, it breeds this nihilistic attitude. It, it breeds that don't care attitude because people go out and they try, they vote, and then the things don't go the way that they want. So then they're like, it doesn't even matter if I vote because they're just going to do whatever. So I'm just like, man, I don't care or whatever. It's nothing I could do anyway. So, but that's the attitude they want you to have. That's right. So that they continue to continue the status quo you know you know and and so many i know so many people who have that attitude and these are really intelligent smart people who even understand how things work they still have that nihilistic attitude of like you know i mean hey just get in where you fit in keep your head down you know and do what they say and just try your best to you know take care of your kids and your family because that's the best you can do no rock the boat baby i mean uh, splash water inside and make sure they get wet because we need their ears to hear and you know when we have people storming our capital getting violent it's time for change and we don't need this violence we have structured within our constitution the ability to have a convention of states and Article 5 lays it out where 
we can actually rewrite the constitution without a lot of bs and we don't really need to rewrite the constitution we need to stop amending the constitution and let the individual interpret that broad document for his or herself the way that our founding was supposed to be in the first place well if they don't start reacting to the people a violent revolution is inevitable it's, it's yes. unavoidable if 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 things don't change, if they don't start to listen, if we don't make enough noise, if we don't get in there politic and change things and you know and, and make things actually work for the people the way it was designed, because like you said, I think that the system was was set to work for the people, but you know the powers that be have found their ways to for it to not work. So it's like our democracy doesn't function. We don't have a functioning democracy. Well, well, that's very true. And, you know, this is the ebb and flow of America. We have always fought and battled against these oppressive individuals. And that's why we need to keep the power of that checks and balances going. Because once America is gone, well, Nazi Germany is going to be worse than Ever. And I'm not saying Germany's coming. I'm saying the mentality of that. Right. You know, this is the, the behavior. That's right. Yeah. The fascist behavior, the the walk of death in front of you. It's it's not a good place to go. And we touched a little bit about the socialistic behaviors. Now, it's not bad to be social, you know, these social programs these welfare programs that I talked about earlier that the government instilled, those have always and should always be charity minded. That comes from the church and the people, not the government, because when we allow the government to feed us, they become, become the power. Yeah. We become dependent. That's right. And I, that's what they want. They, 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 they want complete dependence on the government there. That, and then that reinforces their authority because you can't fight back against the government. If that's how you eat, if they're the ones who provide you food, that's you're right. not going, you never, you're never going to fight against them because you're going to be like, I, I want to keep the government as it is because that's how I eat. They feed me. That's right. And you know, especially here in America, we do not want that behavior marching in because we do have one hell of a badass military and we don't want that going into an evil force so it's important that we come together and we recognize the power of unity i agree i agree i, I completely agree we have to we have to stop the, with the labels because you know we're humans at the end of the day. That's right. And you know it's a human society. You know and it's a human community, and ne none of us can can do anything. You know, as an individual, completely. You know, we we need each other. We're we're natural. We're mammals. We're we're naturally you know group community animals. You know, for 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 us. So that's how we were able to dominate the planet is by each other, like relying on each other, you know? That's each right. one of us can't do everything, you know? Right. We have to rely on our brothers and sisters and we have to come together as a community to accomplish things. Or otherwise we, you know, we won't be able to accomplish the things that we want, you know, that needs to be done. And that is the mindset of activism. So, how can people actually find you and get involved with you? And, you know, also what is your call to action for people to get involved with you? Well, right now, I mean, I've, I've, it's only been about uh, four months or so since I started my channel. So I'm just growing. I just reached over a hundred uh, subscribers on my YouTube channel, but they can find me everywhere. I'm on Spotify, Apple, Rumble, 
Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Um, and the, the, the keyword is King Chuck, the ENT for all of that. Um, right now, I just want to start the conversation because we have to start somewhere. So um, people are so, you know, unmotivated right now that I feel like we need to start to the conversation first. We need to start there, start having these really difficult, hard conversations. That So my, my channel is a place to come uh, to have because you, you can't talk about this stuff at church. You can't talk about it at work. You can't talk about it at school. You can't talk about it in public because somebody might punch you in the face. So my channel is a place for us to come and have these really tough conversations so that we can begin to, you know, go down that road of activism, you know? So hopefully we could come together and build, you know, networks. We have to build institutions, you know, to, to, to support our, our community. But that this is hard work that takes a long time and, and lots of resources. So this, this kind of thing can't happen overnight. So, you know, I'm just trying to bring together like-minded people, people that want to, you know, be activists, people that want to make a change so that we can share knowledge, information, so we can share resources, you know, and at some point we will be able to build an institution that can really go out and help people. Like we can, you know, we can coordinate it. You, you get what I mean? We can coordinate the activism, you know, together. So when we use these platforms, so that we can communicate. Because I think that a lot of big part of this with the mandates and the masks and everything is just to separate us, you know? They saw us coming together. I think the powers that be are afraid. I really do. I, I, their, their way of life is, is gonna go out the window because we're coming together. So, but then they scare us and make us not come together and not even communicate with each other. There's no way, we, what happened to the unions in America, we used to have strong unions all the way across the nation. You know, they've been they've been pulled and broken and torn apart. So, you know, like I say, first we need to start the uh, the conversation, and then we need to start building unions, institutions that you know are funded by the people, ran by the people, and for the people. That's powerful, and. You know, it reminds me of the Bugs Life, I believe it's called, the little cartoon where the grasshoppers are controlling right. the ants and right. the big grasshopper, uh, they're all sitting around the bar and they're having a good time. And uh, after the one ant stood up to him and he says, he takes this little whatever prune or pit and he throws it at the one ant says does that hurt no that doesn't hurt well he finally pulls the jar plug and all of these pits just plummet on top of them and he says now this is all of them ganging up on you if one of them stands up and you let them they're all going to come and that's I the premise here I love that quote. I use it all the time. Yeah. You know? And look at um, look at the journalists. Look what they're doing to journalists. Now we know that they they've been so many uh, journalists have been killed in Mexico. This is in the news. That's they right. Don't talk, they don't talk about how they oppress journalists here in America. You can't get a job if you're not following, you know, the the if you're not talking about the right things, you know, they're gonna blackball you and kick you completely out and starve you out. You know, in Mexico, they just kill, in a lot of countries, they just kill you. In the United States, they just make you not, not be able to have a job. That's right. You know, and this is very important, Chaka, because uh, this Donald Trump thing with the cancellation on social medias and all of that, if they can do it to him, how easy is it going to be for me and you to get flushed down the toilet so we need to remember that and we need to stand up and make sure the little guy can be heard and even if i don't agree with you you have the right to speak your opinion and i 100 man you know because that's what i scream all the time like i'm i'm not a trump supporter but them uh, taking all of his social media away, that is wrong on 
so many fundamental levels. That's right. I don't, it's okay. I don't have to agree with him. I don't have to listen to him either, but he has the right to speak what his mind, what, what he has to say. We have no right to take away his right to speak, you know, like, you know, that is so insane. And everybody was okay with it because they're like, oh, we don't agree with Trump. So it's okay to just take all the social medias. I was screaming at the top of my lungs. This is, this is, this is a, this is a travesty. This, this man has no way to, uh, he has no, they, they took all his social medias away. Like yeah. that is, that, that's a travesty. That's right. You know, and, and, you know, it's, it's elusive to me right now, but there is this thing about when they came for Johnny, I didn't say anything. When they came for Sue, I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. When they came for me, there was no one else to stand up to speak out against it. And I say this all the time. If we let them come at any one of us, if we let them take the rights away of any one of us, then we are allowing them to take the rights away of all of us because they're coming for us next. We got to stand up and not allow them to take the rights from anyone. That's right. Anyone, anyone. Women's rights are human's rights. That's right. LGBTQ rights are, are human rights. Everybody. You know, black rights are human rights. Yep. You know, it's, 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 we're all human. You can't allow them to take the rights of any group or segment of people that they want to choose. Because if you let them do that, who's to say they won't come and do it to you? That's right. The moment you don't rec some, recognize somebody else's rights, your rights are already gone. So anyway, our time is short here. I want to say thank you for participating. And we really need to hook up again and get involved more and really start having more of these conversations. Thank you for really, participating in the Dead America podcast. I really enjoyed the conversation, man, way more than I thought I would have. Um, I ain't going to lie to you. And um, like I say, it, it, if we start talking, then we, we'll start realizing that we, we agree a lot more than we disagree. That's right. So, you know, I invite who's ever listening to join the show. We go on a Wednesday and Thursday night at about 11 o'clock. And then we go on on Friday and Saturday night at about 1 a.m. or so. And like I say, uh, the best place to find us is uh, live is YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. That's where the show will be live. The clips show up in other places. And the podcast ver versions of the show show up on um, Spotify, Apple, and Anchor, so forth and so on. King Chaka ENT, you guys. King Chaka, ENT. Speak it loud, be proud, and keep doing what you are doing, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Peace and love. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe. And join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.